<laughs> What's up guys, it's me, CP, and uh, Diesel. And we are going to be answering a few more questions. Once again, thank you so much for writing in. You keep writing in, we'll keep answering them. Correct. All right, first question. Bring it. Um, <laughs> how can I lose weight after pregnancy? Well, first and foremost, congratulations. What an exciting period of time in your life. And you're actually also at this um, incredibly lucky period, especially for, those, uh, for, for weight loss, because if you are breastfeeding, you know you are going to burn an extra about 500 calories a day. So breastfeeding, it's almost equal, actually it's equal to like an intense session of cardio or an intense session of, of weight training. So you're already going to be burning, as far as the metabolic rate, you're through the roof. So congratulations because your metabolism is skyrocketing. Um, a lot of times, however, the hormonal balance gets thrown off just a little bit. Now, we're getting into something a little bit tricky there, but as far as just overall calorie expenditure goes, it should be cranking. The biggest thing that you need is just simple structure, and this guy knows all about structure. Oh, yeah. Um, structure is the way that we do everything when it comes to nutrition. Nutrition is always going to be that backbone, then we're going to put a little bit of exercise on top of it. So, I'm, I'm hoping that... Um, you know, it's, and this might sound kind of weird, but I'm hoping that you've been relatively sedentary for the last few weeks, especially uh, in the final, final few weeks of the pre pregnancy, simply because your body will have adapted to being sedentary. So what we want to do is anytime we're going to be starting off with any kind of fat loss program, we say it all the time, less is more. Less is so much more. So the best thing you can do, number one, if you are breastfeeding, you're going to be burning a lot more calories. We're going to create a nice little nutrition structure, five meals of the day, or maybe even six. And all I want you doing is walking, walking 30 to maybe even 45 minutes a day. Let's actually, you know what, just stick with 30. Less is more. And that way, in a couple weeks, we can bump it up to 45, and your body's going to experience this whole new uh, stimulus, and so it's going to get that much better results. The last thing we want to do is show your body all the cards at once. It's kind of like playing poker. What we do is we just tease the body. We play one card at a time. That's how this guy lost all of his weight. We just tease it. We're playing one card at a time, and anytime the body adapts, we switch it up. So first thing I want you to do, create a nice little nutrition structure. Check out the blogs. We've got you know lists of good foods on there. Getting into eating five times a day. Reshape launch is September 15th. So we're gonna that's where we're really gonna dial in your structure and just walking right now. Good luck with that. Tune in with us in just a little bit. We're gonna give you a lot more structure. What do you think? That sounds awesome. Yeah, we yes. definitely get that one a lot. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, next question. Can children carbohydrate cycle? Okay, tricky question, a very tricky question. I mean, um, I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I went through like all the fad diets, you know, the cabbage soup diet, the, the I don't know, diets mm -hmm. you know, that are out there, so. Sure, um, and one, one thing, it's wonderful to create nutrition awareness for kids. Uh, the one thing that we really want to avoid though is focusing on their weight as an issue. The best thing we can do is, of course, just create education uh, around nutrition and around movement and encouraging some kind of positive behavior that's going to revolve around them striving for health, striving to become healthier, happier people. So we want to focus on that. However, um, psychologically, sometimes carb cycling, it can be uh, beneficial. The first thing I want you to do, of course, is check with your physician. That's the first thing that we always ask anybody to do. Check with your physician before you do anything and make sure that, that it's okay for your child. Um, psychologically though, for the kids, it works really well. Remember, carb cycling is much more of a psychological approach. We reap the benefits physiologically, so your body, we, we can still create a, a calorie deficit. You're gonna lose weight, but the beauty of carb cycling is that it introduces good health and nutrition to, to your children or to anybody but still allows you to reward every other day. So remember, I mean, the saying, the motto behind carb cycling is that if you can't have it today, you can always have it tomorrow. So it's, it's one of those things that where we can actually start to reward the kids on these cleaner days, on the low days, but I, I highly encourage you not to take carbohydrates completely away from the children on the low days. Remember, they're growing, they still need uh, adequate nutrition. Very, very important. So you always wanna check with your physician there first. Remember, this whole carb cycling lifestyle, it's a lifestyle and it creates these really broad parameters. A lot of us, we have these special, special needs and special populations that, that require those, 
um, very specific uh, nutrition needs. So always check with your physician first, I can't say it enough. Uh, but it really can be, as far as just a broad approach, it can be extremely beneficial to introduce to the children. But check with your doctor first. <laughs> I can't <laughs> always, say it enough. <laughs> I always want that. All right, speaking of, you know, speaking to your doctor, is um, carb carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrates cycling safe for <laughs> people with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, or diabetes? Okay, another good question, and it's a heck of a tongue twister also, isn't oh, it? Let's yeah, try saying yeah. that one three times. Yeah, um, I Carbohydrate had that. cycling. <laughs> carbohydrates. <laughs> It's because I, I was writing down something and then trying to read it at the I same know. Time. It's like chewing gum and walking. Yeah, um, which I can't do both either. <laughs> so. Nice hat, by the way. I know. You know what, real quick, there's there's a story behind this hat. <laughs> tell, tell them where we got it. Oh, NYC. NYC. I forgot the name of the shop, but you know, I did some good shopping. There. Yeah, it's this really cool shop in Midtown, New York. It's like right at the base of the Empire State Building. And uh, every single time that, that we go over there, we have to stop by the store because they've got like the funkiest hats um, and just, just really, really cool clothes and sunglasses. I think you got like half of your wardrobe from there. And um, <laughs> Does it all cost like three bucks? Yeah, it's like three bucks for everything. And so every time we go, <laughs> we have to go here and I, I get presents for everybody back home. Don't tell them that yeah, I spent three bucks. Yeah, I was about to bucks. say. <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I, okay, yeah, cat's out of the bag. I'm cheap. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk right. about um, carb cycling safe for people with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. Great question. I'm going to go right back to what I was just saying before. Check with your physician first. Remember, carb cycling is it's a lifestyle. It's this uh, really cool psychological and physiological structure that we create just to, cre you know, just to, to make nutrition and dieting easier so so we can do it for a long period of time remember that's really what we're looking to do is to create a nutrition structure that we can maintain and we can sustain for a long period of time so that's why we like cycling so much because if you can't have it today you can always have it tomorrow and that kind of mentality it's easy it's easy to swallow no pun intended <laughs> man we're sharp today what's going on I know. um okay so once again check with your doctor first um, really when it comes to also satisfying and, and, and focusing on those goals of reducing cholesterol, of reducing blood pressure, and stabilizing blood sugar level for diabetes, you can't see I'm pointing at the, t at the paper right here, um, that's really going to come down also to creating a deficit so there's going to be weight loss, but really what that's going to come down to the foods that we select in that cycle. So remember, we can cycle with all kinds of different foods. Of course, if we're looking to reduce cholesterol, well, we're, going to be, we're definitely going to want to select foods that are going to be high in fiber, soluble in, and insoluble, to grab that cholesterol, pull it out of the body. Obviously, it's a little bit more complex than that, but that's the way I want you to think about it. High fiber foods is going to drop your cholesterol, which is fantastic. Um, and those high insoluble and soluble fiber foods. High blood pressure, obviously, stay away from your sodium, first and foremost, and a few other things. As you lose weight, of course, your blood pressure, you're probably going to notice it's going to start coming down. Plus, on top of that, the cycles that we're going to be creating for you guys, especially in Reshape, they're, they're relatively, we encourage low sodium. We do allow you to use salt just to taste, but we are going to encourage you to start pulling away from salt, and everything that we do is relatively lower in fat. Um, and of course with diabetes, now is when it, this is, this is probably one of the trickiest questions when it comes to carb cycling, because carbohydrates of course, especially you diabetics out there, mm -hmm. you understand the importance of carbohydrates, but also how careful we have to be with them. So this is really what's, when it's going to come down to um, selecting foods that in, in your carb cycle, and especially in your rewards on those high carb days, um, foods that are not going to be extremely high in simple sugars, so you're going to be selecting your your complex carbohydrates. Um, and also on your low days, you don't necessarily want to pull those carbohydrates out completely. Really important, you're going to still stay with good complex carbohydrates, your root vegetables, your grains, um, legumes, also fantastic. Even some of your pastas, your whole grain pastas. So they're going to be a really slow breakdown. Of course, consult your doctor. Bring, print out that list on the blog. Bring it to, to your doctor and uh, make sure that everything's okay there. Cool. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> Guys, we're out of time. Later. Until next time. Until next time. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow or the next day. Maybe. <laughs>